Hello. So just going to get right into it. I want to talk about what's going on in Israel and Gaza right now. Normally I don't talk too much about Israel. I was going to later in the future about like other topics, like specific ones like the Liberty and shit like that, but I think I'll give my thoughts on what's going on right now. It's kind of impromptu because um, it's like a big story, kind of like the Kanye thing. I gave my impromptu thoughts then, so I'll do that for this. I don't think there's much that I can say that like other people haven't said. Um, I mean, my bias is like pretty obvious, like I'm pro-Israel overall. And like, yeah, I definitely think Hamas is fucked up. Um, I don't doubt the people in Gaza like suffer. And I mean, obviously Palestinians have suffered, but not sure how this is gonna like ameliorate any of that. It's just gonna make it like way worse. And um, I don't really, it's not like the main point I wanna talk about, but like a little bit of my thoughts on just like the Gaza situation. Like historically, I mean, Israel pulled out of there in the early 2000s and like did the blockade after Hamas was elected. Hamas like just out and out, like its stated goal is to like remove Israel off the map. It doesn't care about like quote unquote terrorist activities. Like it's, it'll obviously like partake in those kind of things. So clearly the blockade was, I mean, it's kind of like why Israel built the wall as well. Like, I mean, it just was, what was needed to ensure like security and I mean you could argue it's like a moral and it caused suffering but at the end of the day like Israel is gonna value security over these kind of things like over you know the convenience of other peoples and for me when I just like look at a map of the fucking like area it's like okay there's Israel there's Gaza there's the West Bank and then it's surrounded by Arab countries so I mean it's pretty obvious that like if you know the suffering of the Palestinians was like the number one priority for like everyone there could be like a pretty easy uh, thing to resolve this like there are you know quote-unquote re Palestinian refugees in like Jordan still in Lebanon but it's like I mean at the end of the day they're no longer refugees after like a couple like a generation or whatever um I think the other Arab na nations could absorb them if they wanted to like I don't see how that's like that difficult really I think they're used as a pawn and I'm not saying like Israel are like saints um but like yeah they're gonna value their own people over other people like that's just kind of what's gonna happen i mean we can see like we we know what would happen if the roles were reversed i mean i think you know it's like super cliche like there's a lot of cliche shit that's coming out of this like uh conflict but you know the whole like gold in my air quote of like if they you know whatever if the roles were reversed they'd like wipe israel off the map and like israel if they really wanted to they could wipe Gaza off the map which i mean they might fucking do now so but um anyways i'm not like an expert on the history of this region so, like, I'm not gonna, I don't know, like, what else more to say about that. I mean, I just don't think it's, like, good optics, what they're doing, and I think it's immoral. And obviously, you can say the same thing about the Israelis, but, like, at the end of the day, like, if they just, if, I mean, the Gazans didn't do anything, like, yeah, they'd be living in shitty conditions, but they wouldn't be, like, bombed the fuck out of, like, what they're experiencing right now. I mean, you know, there were times where the blockade was uh, thought to be, like, eased or was about to be eased, and they pulled some shit, and, like, I mean, it's just very clear that if they were given any ground or like given any kind of like uh like land back or you know the blockade was lifted it would just result in more you know terrorist shit because i mean they don't even respect like i think i'm not sure if hamas like believes in the 48 borders or if they totally just want that like totally want israel i think they just want israel totally erased and then like maybe the pa like palestinian authorities are more for like the 48 borders i don't know i'm not necessarily the best guy to like talk about this stuff because it's not like my main focus um, my main, like, issue that's really pissing me off is kind of, like, a side issue to all this. I mean, I don't personally know anyone in Israel or whatever, so it's not super personal to me. Like, I have my bias, but whatever. Um, I just think the, a, a lot of the pro-Palestine side are just, like, some of the worst people, like, on the internet. Um, you have people like Syrian Girl, who's, like, this, uh, Assad apologist who, like, thinks Assad, like, didn't do anything wrong and, like, even though he's killed way more Arabs than Israel has. Uh, but, you know, he's done nothing wrong, and um, she's, like, the favorite E-thought Arab bitch uh, of the, like, far right. Like, David Duke, she's, like, cool with all these people. Um, but, you know, when it comes to Israel, she thinks that every Israeli citizen is basically, like, fair game because they all either will or have um, been in the military because it's, like, mandatory service. She, like, thinks, like, no, Hamas, like, hasn't done any, like, atrocities. Like, I won't say the R word, but she doesn't think, like, any of that has happened. She thinks, like, Hamas are these, like... It's weird, because there's this weird dichotomy of, like, oh, like, they're going in, guns blazing, like, being badasses. But, like, oh, no, they're also, like, very gentle with hostages, and they're not doing anything wrong. They're just, like, doing what is proper. Like, it doesn't really make much sense, at least with her um, 
thinking. So, yeah, there's just people like Syrian Girl. There's obviously, like, other far-right people like Duke. Uh, you got Enoch, who are, like, totally supporting this kind of thing. Just, like, all out, you know... I mean, they obviously just want, like, all the Jews to be dead. And, I mean, Syrian Girl, like, essentially wants half the Jews in the world to die. And, I mean, that's not even really too much of a, like, overstatement. I mean, that is just, like, the logical endpoint of a lot of the, like, anti-Israel, like, pro-Palestine stuff. I'm not saying everyone thinks this way, but, like, if you think Israel is a settler colonial state and all the people there are, like, settlers and illegally there, whatever, um, then, yeah, like, you should, by your own logic like attack them because they all are gonna you know join the military or have been in the military or whatever and that's like one degree of separation away from like just targeting jews in general and i'm not trying to like be a victim or say diaspora jews are victims here because like so far they're not but um i mean that, that was you know that's happened before where jews abroad like in argentina were attacked because like essentially jews abroad are more or less going to support israel and i mean technically they can become israeli citizens if they want like i could become an israeli citizen like pretty easily i would just have to like make aliyah or whatever um i'm not a dual citizen by the way but it just wouldn't be like too big of a leap for that to actually happen like a leap in logic or whatever so yeah you have just like these weird like i don't know like i don't know if you want to call them like far right or like tanky not not tankies i don't know like you just have like these weird type of people who are like Assad Putin supporters who like also uh you know support Palestine and like are supporting these recent attacks or whatever and then you have like really annoying other right-wingers who are like basically just like reveling in like the nihilism of it all just hiding behind it and on Twitter accounts and like saying like oh like open borders for Israel ho oh, like let in Africans like dude like hundreds of people are dying like way more are gonna die and like these people are saying shit about like oh Africans like really retarded um and not only that you have these people who keep insinuating that like for some reason like oh like i i don't know about you but i don't support either side and the u.s shouldn't get involved like no one is even discussing that like that's not ever been a thing where the u.s has directly been like boots on the ground involved in something with like israel palestine um like that's what they're insinuating like oh all i know is that no none of our boys should go and it's like that's not even remotely on the table so i don't know what you're talking about um, like, they just want to make it about themselves for some reason. Like, oh, like, you know, I don't care what's happening. Like, I only care about the U.S., which is, like... I mean, no one even asks these people what their opinions are. Like, you just have these, like, weird magatards and, like, others. So it's really stupid. I mean, no one is asking that, like, U.S. soldiers be deployed or anything like that. It's just, like, totally absurd. And then beyond that, you have people arguing, like, oh, well, Israel deserves it because they, like lead my uh lead um middle eastern migrants into europe and they basically go to like two uh israeli refugee orgs like i think one is called israel and there's like one other one and they always say like oh this is or maybe a quote from someone and they always point uh to this as if like israel is like the leading refugee resettlement uh country or like purveyor of that in the world and like that's like they're leading the march of non-europeans into europe which is like totally false like anyone could just look at the major refugee orgs in europe and like most are like associated with the un or with like the eu or like catholicism stuff like that um other countries on the mediterranean coast obviously israel has like one or two orgs associated with that because it's on the mediterranean coast as well but like i don't know i mean Basically, I'm just pissed off because I got muted on Twitter <laughs> for something else, so I'm just, like, ranting. But, I mean, it's just, like, a crazy, nonsensical statement. And I want to gather all, like, the refugee orgs that are in existence and, like, put them on a graph or something. Because, like, people just, like, cherry-pick the one or two Israeli ones. It's really stupid. And regardless, that's not even, like... It's just, like, a weird point to be making when, like, hundreds of people are dying. And, like, there's, like, a lot of crazy shit going on. These people are just like, well, uh, like, look at this meme of, like... George Soros rubbing his hands or I mean it's just really retarded um obviously I know this isn't like the main like thing to be worrying about obviously with this kind of conflict I just think it ties into like what I do on the internet I mean frankly like there's you know I don't think there's like any like hidden secret thing for me to do here like to you know like Jews and Bolshevism for example that's something that like not a lot of people know about except for like far-right types so like that's why I like went into that but like for this conflict like it's a pretty well-known conflict people know the different sides like they can look into it if they want and like there's plenty of people on youtube who could talk about this from either angle so there's not much i could say but i just think yeah like a lot of the online right are 
really dumb when it comes to Israel. Um, oh, another thing I wanted to say, which like is always on my mind in terms of this uh, conflict, is that they most of these online right people are from what anyone would call like a former colonial settler, you know, state, whatever you want to call it. Um, like I'm in the U.S., people from Canada, New Zealand, Australia, like obviously all those places experienced like tremendous ethnic cleansing and like the, you know, wasp population did all this shit, yada, yada, yada. And they would never put up with the kind of things that like the Israelis like put up with. I mean, if they're just, if they're just trying to be consistent, you know, they would say, or South Africa is a good example. They all feel bad for South Africa. And frankly, I do too. I mean, I don't really... I mean, I, I'm totally pro-white when it comes to the South African white people. I think they face a lot of shit, and I don't really care how bad apartheid was because what's going on now is, like, frankly, it seems a lot worse, or it's just whatever. It's just a different thing, and it's really brutal. So I'm totally, like, these people who, you know, use this kind of, like, um, settler colonialism for me, not for the kind of thing. It's like, I mean, it's it's very easy to rest on your laurels from like Australia, which is where Syrian girls actually living, ironically, or from the US where I live and like kind of give these prognostications. But I mean, you know, we're, we're on stolen land to <laughs> argue from like the leftist mind frame or mindset, which is why I think the left is way more consistent when it comes to these things. Because a lot of the left who are anti-Israel uh, are also like pro land back, pro reparations, all that shit. And I'm obviously anti that stuff, but from a left-wing perspective, it's more consistent. From a right-wing right -wing perspective, it is not really consistent to be like, oh, Israel deserves this, and they're bad because they did ethnic cleansing, which fine, like, they did, like, objectively, like, whatever. Um, but so did, like, every settler colonial country on Earth, and every nation that's, like, come into being has had, like, violence and whatever associated with it. So these same rightoids who, like, complain about how Europe is, like, oh, like, you know, being quote unquote invaded and there's a white genocide going on because migrants want to go there. And then, you know, the opposing side will say like, well, Europeans did colonization and imperialism and all that. It's like, well, we don't have to, um, you know, pay for what our ancestors did and like they didn't even do anything wrong, etc. And they say all this like crazy shit, which like is fine. I agree with that. I mean, I'm in the US. I wouldn't want like a Native American to come and like you know, take my house or something. Like, that'd be fucking stupid. Or a black person to, like, ask me reparations. Like, I don't care. But, I mean, just apply the same consistency to Israel. Like, at this point, it's been around. There's been multiple generations. So, it just makes the most sense. Um, the only difference is that Israel didn't ethnically cleanse the country, like, <laughs> to the same extent. So, there's still, like, the indigenous population there. Like, a decent population within their own borders. Uh, official borders and like become became citizens so like it's kind of just it's just weird i mean anyone can look at a map it's like a really small country surrounded by arabs i mean i just don't like i i can just never be like this like you know i have a, i have an ethnic bias but i could just never be this like pro-palestine guy when like it's just it, it would be super inconsistent for me to be like super pro-palestine and then in the u.s be like oh well i don't like immigration i don't like reparations land back all that stuff so i just have to be consistent um, and also, like, yeah, I, I have a bias, like, who cares? So, yeah, that's all I really have to say about that. I mean, I think that um, this, like, conflict is never going to really resolve. Um, if anything, like, I don't know, one side would either have to totally go away, which would, like, be genocide, or um, it would just be enveloped by a different, like, bigger conflict. Like, I don't know, I could think of, like, maybe, like, crazy climate change causing a disruption or, like, a crazy world war or, you know, something that would just, like, overshadow this conflict, but, I mean, I doubt it's gonna go away, and, like, obviously we're gonna be seeing some crazy shit. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, I think, like, everyone knows my bias, I think that essentially there was, like, you know, a population transfer <laughs> when the state of Israel was established, and, I mean, to, um, just to say from the outset, like, I don't think that's a very good idea to create this country. That's, like, another thing that a lot of people, and that might offend, like, some Israelis listening to this, but, like, it just objectively wasn't, it clearly has not been a good idea. It's been embroiled in conflict so much. And I could say that about a lot of countries that, like, maybe shouldn't have been created or whatever, but obviously that doesn't matter because the fact is it was and it has been a thing for a while. But after its creation, I mean, essentially, in my mind, there was a population transfer of Jews from the Middle East to this area and then, like, 
some of the Arabs, like most of them, but some stayed, but like a lot left and like a lot were pushed out. And that was that. I mean, I think there's, I, I don't know, in my mind, I think that there's, uh, there was a population transfer and then I think there's been like multiple um, deals, like land, peace deals, whatever you want to call it. And I think the Palestinians should have just like accepted something and just kind of just moved on. Like, I mean, yeah, they lost and like it sucks and they like had to deal with some shit. But um, yeah, I mean, it's I mean, it's counterproductive, even from like a practical standpoint, what they're doing. And I mean, optically, it looks terrible. I think it's immoral to do what they're doing. Like they're not to me, they're not like these Gandhi-esque freedom fighters. Like they're going around and like parading naked women in the streets. I'm pretty sure they've done like the R word. Like, uh, I mean, I, I don't see them as like being these like freedom fighters, like beacons of, you know, whatever. Um, but frankly, that's just my bias. Cause I don't even think there's like really an objective, like I'm kind of postmodern on this shit. Like, I don't think there's like really an objective, like good or bad in this scenario to be like uh, the most uh, fair I can be. It's like, I don't think there's an objectively good side here. And I mean, I'm picking mine because I have a bias. And I mean, I do think I could argue from like consistency that like one should at least like not be anti-Israel if one has like accepts other countries and like accepts others uh, situations, stuff like that. But um, whatever, I mean, I've been kind of rambling on this and uh, shit's just gonna get like pretty crazy so, but I thought I'd just say something because Twitter is, I can't tweet something this long and I got muted for something else entirely. So uh, that should be it. And uh, I'll see you guys around. Peace.